Hey y'all, I'm Kim, host of Book Marketing Mania, and I'm so thrilled you're tuning in to learn how to build your audience and reach new readers on podcast. I'm so excited to kick off this series of podcast interviews with author and publisher spotlights on new friends that I have connected with through the Podmatch service that we talked about in our last episode, number 131. So first up is Susan Gabriel, an author and co-founder of her own Christian book publishing company. Susan's going to share about how she helps writers like you to make their publishing dreams a reality, what it means to her to follow God in business as an author, what she's seeing working well for authors to market their books, and her own experience using the Podmatch service as a podcast guest. You're in for a treat today, so let's get to it. Welcome, Susan. I'm so glad to have you here as a guest on Book Marketing Mania to serve my listeners. Thank you. It's really great to be here. I've really looked forward to this interview. Oh, me too, Susan. And shout out to our mutual friend, the amazing Robin Graham, who, if y'all haven't heard, she was my guest on episode 110. And she's a fabulous business coach that Susan and I both adore. And so I'm so thankful that she connected us in email. And Susan and I hadn't really had much of a chance to chat until her name popped up as a match on Podmatch. So shout out to Podmatch. We're going to talk about that a little bit today. Um, but I'm just so glad to finally get to connect with you, Susan. And here hear all about your publishing company, Soul Sunshine. So tell us a little bit about that and how you work with authors. Yeah, Soul Sunshine has been around since 2020. A friend of mine and I, we've talked online for about six years, but I wrote a memoir and I wanted to publish it and I wanted to have my own publishing company imprint Mm -hmm. to put on the book. So we were kicking around some names and somehow Soul Sunshine just popped up. We left the idea of using S-O-N for Son of God. So I did publish my first book under Soul Sunshine. And then I tried to figure out the best way to get it out there. Mm -hmm. So I did quite a few different kinds of things to market the book. So I've had a lot of different experiences and trial and error. And now... If you Google the name of my book and my name, the Google responses will pop up for about the first five pages are my book and me. And some of the places that pop up where my book is for sale, they're in foreign countries. Oh, wow. Yeah. So it's really gotten out there, which I'm really pleased about because my purpose in writing the book was to talk about how God worked in my life. Uh And to it was just really to glorify God. But it was a story about an event that occurred in my life. It was really traumatic and how how he helped me through that. So I I wanted my book to be read. I didn't really care as much about whether I was going to make money. Mm -hmm. So my, you know, main goal was to just get it out there. And then I had written a bunch of poems. So I decided then that I would publish the poems, but use artwork and a different artist to illustrate each poem. So I put a notice out on Facebook that I was looking for some artists to illustrate my poems. So I got to know a few of them really well, and I decided to bring them in and have them do other books for me because people started approaching me at that point to see if I would also publish their books. Uh Uh-huh. Um, And so we started with children's books. People had had some bad experiences, like an illustrator just quit working for them. Mm -hmm. And so they had a half finished book. Mm, Yeah. So I thought, well, you know, if I had a publishing company and I had several artists that were basically working for me as contractors, I could switch them out. You know, I could find another artist that would finish it off. So that would make it much easier for our authors. Uh-huh. You know, they, they, because it's kind of hard for authors to deal with freelancers when they're, they haven't really done it much before. Yes, yes. Yeah, and they don't really quite know. Plus, you have to, a lot of the freelancers are in other countries. Mm-hmm. So you have to figure out how to pay them because many of them are not on PayPal. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, it, it, you have to figure out which one of those money transferring apps are going to work in their country. Mm-hmm. So 
I had a lot of things to learn. Yeah. And I, so I got that all ironed out. I now have a team of about five regular artists that I work with on a regular basis and a webmaster. Also, my bookkeeper is my pastor's wife. Uh huh. So that turned out really well. Yeah. And then I have a couple of writer, editor people uh, who also work with me. Yeah. So I've got a team now for the last two years. We've been publishing and it's been really fun and really uh-huh. interesting. The methods that we have used to get new clients, new authors, um, has been a, a lot of trial and error. But we found the best way is through word of mouth referrals from mm-hmm. uh, other authors and repeat business. Yeah. Because if, if an author has a really good time with creating their book and they're really happy with it, you know, they're going to want to turn around and do it again. <laughs> yeah. So, so true. Yeah. Right. So, so we get a lot of repeat business, which I'm really pleased about. Yeah. That's so great. And yeah, I think that's so true. Like the author community, it, even though it's vast, there's so many authors out there and so many people want to write books. It's truly like a close knit community. You know, it's so mm-hmm. like if you're doing yeah. things really well, they are going to definitely share you and pat you on the back and refer you to like crazy. But if you do things bad, ooh, they're going to spread that like wildfire too, you know, yeah, so it's, I know. <laughs> you just, yeah, definitely ask around, you know, and, and make sure that who you're working with comes with good references for sure that you can reach out to and ask about their experience. And yeah. I'm so glad you like shared those different steps with us, Susan, because I think, I mean, I've been naive to it because I haven't written a book, but I had no idea just, you know, self-publishing, like how it's evolved, but then also just all the steps involved, you know, if you don't outsource any of it and don't work with a publishing company, don't work with anybody at all, you know, if you're just like totally taking it on yourself, well, you're having to wear all these hats and you may not be qualified to do each of those steps. And it's definitely going to show up in the book, you know, your final product. And I think like you're saying, like, even if you do start kind of outsourcing pieces of it to somebody that does know how to do it you know, are you qualified to manage that project? It's like managing people, like managing a team working for you is exactly what it is. And if you don't have those skills, I can't even imagine. Oh my gosh. And I I hear about that all the time where projects just kind of get left right in the middle of it because they can't find the person that's doing their website or they can't find, you know, their editor or like you said, the illustrator, or, you know, that it just gets stuck, you know, yes. and you're going to spend a lot more time and money having to pick that up and let somebody else start from fresh than if you were yeah. just to maybe partner one, with somebody in the beginning. One of our authors had been picked up by a traditional publisher, huh? a small press, and seven years after he was signed, uh, with this publishing company, he still didn't have his book published. Oh, my goodness. And the lady who owned the, pub- the publishing company went into the hospital. She was like 90 years old. Oh. At that point. And, and so I said, well, can we get your copyright released? Because, mm-hmm. you know, he had sold the book, basically. And he worked worked at getting the copyright released. And I am just right now on the verge of publishing his book. So finally, after seven years, he's going to have a book. You know, what you mentioned is exactly right. Not having that background, that technical background and the ability to manage a team. Well, I had going for me, which is probably the reason I've been able to be successful, is my background is in business development and proposals. So Mm. I've been a proposal manager, which is, you know, basically managing a team Mm -hmm. that creates proposals for large businesses Mm -hmm. like DOD contractors. So to create proposals. So that involves everything that's that you need to have in order to be a successful book publisher. Yeah. That's have to know a a lot of the technical aspects of, you know, the software. Um, I'm really good um, at Word. Uh Well, I've used it for more than Uh 30 years. Uh, done, done writing and editing for about the same length of time in managing teams. And, you know, a, a lot of times I had to do a lot of the graphic design as uh-huh. well. So that's one reason why I was able to publish my own book successfully three times and then publish, of course, other people's books. 
Yeah, yeah, that's amazing. So, so what, yeah. what, and I know this probably differs between the different books, Susan, but is there like a typical time frame? Like if somebody comes to you and they're ready to get started, do they, are they typically like at the beginning stages of, you know, writing their book or they have a book in hand and now they want to publish it? You know, I've had all, all of those. The, okay. I've had uh, authors from both sides. I've had authors that had written kind of a draft uh-huh. or they've had just more of an idea and we've helped them to develop that into a book. Okay. Um, and then we've also had uh, two or three people come to me who already had a book. They had the illustrations. They just needed it published. Mm-hmm. And mostly what we have been publishing has been children's books and Christian books, business books. And we haven't really done any mm-hmm. adult fiction books because uh-huh. there's so many publishers that already do that. Right. I kind of prefer to do the other kinds of books that people are less likely to have success mm-hmm. finding a publisher for. Yeah. So memoirs, highly illustrated books, you know, like cookbooks. Mm-hmm. And we've done a few middle grade fiction and then young adult fiction type books. Okay. Yeah. So, and I've got a new project now that I'm excited about a pastor who had written a doctoral thesis on one of the Gospels. And it was really well written. And uh-huh. he wanted to turn it into two other books. Oh, wow. Um, uh, a Bible study guide on that particular Gospel and uh-huh. a devotional set of devotionals, like 90 devotionals. Yeah. So I'm getting to have the fun of getting to write those devotionals and create the study guide. And to me, that's just so much fun. Yeah. Really, everything yeah. I do is fun. There isn't really much of anything except the bookkeeping side of it <laughs> <laughs> that I don't like. Uh-huh. I love all of the different aspects of of book, book publishing. And so to me, a going to work is like getting to have fun. Oh, yeah. And that's how it should be. I totally feel the same way. And I love hearing that you like working with your the pastor that wants to take his thesis and, you know, basically repurpose it into a book, you know, so more people can yeah. read it. I think a lot of people, there's probably a lot of people, their thesis would be really cool into a book form. And just thinking of all the different things of how you created content. I know a lot of women that I've worked with, you know, they've been leading Bible studies at church, but they didn't have a formal book or anything, but they're able to take that and put it into a book or somebody that's been podcasting forever, they're able to take those episodes and put them into a book form. And, you know, just think of ways you can serve people in other ways than you never thought of. If you don't think of the traditional, I just want to sit down and write a book, like there's a way to do it where you're taking content, you know, from other places that you have and don't let anything go to waste. And I wanted to ask you too, Susan, I know something that's really important to your heart is following God as an entrepreneur. And I would just Mm -hmm. love to hear what you think that means, especially for our audience of nonfiction authors. A lot of them are writing books specific to, you know, the Bible, what the Bible says about this particular struggle that people have in their lives. And, you know, we can get so caught up in that rat race of, you know, writing and marketing and just everything that goes into that. And sometimes we kind of forget that we need to always, you know, follow God in what we're doing in our businesses as authors. And can you just kind of share what what does that mean to you exactly? Yeah, it what you said is right, following God. In my memoir, I told this little story about one of my little dogs. And when he was a puppy, he got out. He's escaped underneath the fence and we didn't realize it until we just found he was gone. And for two days, we went looking for him. I put up flyers. I went door to door. We looked for him everywhere. And finally, someone had seen the flyer. They called. It was in the evening. They said they saw him. So we drove over to that area. It was a couple of miles away. We drove over there and we were calling to him out the window of the car as we drove really slowly down the street. And pretty soon my husband said, look behind us. And I looked and there was a little Andy running as fast as he could to try to catch up to the car. So he came back. We had a wonderful reunion. You know, we have a tradition of going down to the mailbox with our dogs. And the mailbox is quite a distance because Uh we live in the country. So they get a little bit of a walk that way. He... The other dogs will kind of run around and sniff, but he never does. He walks three feet 
no more than three feet behind me. And he will just stay there and watch my feet. And it's so funny. And I know it's because of that traumatic experience he had. He does not want to get out and away from where I am going. And and that to me is exactly the way I want to be with Jesus. I want to follow in his footsteps. And I I wrote a poem about focusing on the feet. Uh That's the way that I want to do it. And I pray, you know, every morning, God help me to do exactly what you want me to do today. Because I can plan my day Mm -hmm. and it gets completely messed up by something that happens in the morning. But I realize that something that was supposed to happen and there are so many interesting and exciting things that happen that I did not plan, Mm -hmm. but I can see God's hand all over it. And I always pray and ask God to bring us our clients. And I have seen, he has brought us some really interesting authors as clients that I never would have said, gee, that's the author that we should have. Uh But it turns out that we bring them in and then all of a sudden I can see exactly why God brought that in. For example, we have one that is not a believer. You know, he's an atheist. Uh One that is uh, a Muslim. Uh But I have the opportunity then to witness to them. Yes. So it then it makes sense. But you wouldn't normally think, you know, we're a Christian publishing company, wouldn't think that those would be the kinds of authors that we would have. Mm -hmm. But God wanted them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he yeah. wanted, wanted us to take them on. And yeah. uh, I send out a devotional every evening to everyone on my team and all of my authors. And it helps to keep them also, you know, walking with God, mm-hmm. which I feel like is a part of my responsibility. This phrase popped into my head one day, I am the good sheepdog. Mm-hmm. Instead of the good shepherd. Yeah. Because, you know, if Jesus is his shepherd, I'm just his helper. Uh-huh. Uh, kind of keeping people close to him. Yeah. Making sure they don't wander too far. Or if, uh, you know, if they are wandering and de- go over to them and help them to find their way back. Yeah. Yeah, that's so great. I love that you do that because, yeah, you're servicing authors, but you get to minister to them as well, you know, yes. and, and like you say, whether they're believers or not, you're just you're getting to shine that light, you know, like you talk about with your publishing company. I love that it's, you know, Soul Sunshine Publishing and it's the sunshine, S-O-N, and it's because God's sun lights our path. And I think that's so such a great reminder for authors, you know, just to remember that, you know, he's called us to this message and he is going to light the path and make it happen. You know, it may not look like the next author, you know, your friend next to you or, you know, somebody you see online, he's got his own path for you. And I love that, that you're there to help support support them making their publishing dreams a reality. So let me ask you too, Susan, with working with lots of different authors, what are you seeing like right now as being like the best thing for authors to build their platform? Um, It depends a lot on the genre of the book. With children's books, I would say Facebook is a pretty good place for people to try to get acquainted with Mm -hmm. other people. And to sort of build an audience there. There are quite a few Facebook groups that are generally, you know, parents Mm -hmm. of children. And you can get your book out and better known that way. That's one way. I would say some of my more successful authors are going out into their neighborhoods and talking to bookstores. Mm -hmm. There's also a program actually with the grocery stores where you can go in and set up in a grocery store uh, with your book and a display and Uh people can come by and have you autograph the book and then they go to the checkout stand and pay for it and then the money comes back to you. Yeah. So there are a lot of really interesting programs like that. And of course, book fairs. But I would say some book promos online are also very successful. Mm -hmm. There are some sites, that's what they do. You pay to have your book featured in their newsletter and on their website. And what I found was that worked really well for me with my memoir. I would say Mm -hmm. that's a really excellent um, method. What I did was I 
gathered up all of the, the promos I could find. I put all uh, links to those so that I could get to them and easily. And mm-hmm. I tried out each one. I would set up a promo for a one day or two days. And then I would wait uh, like a week or so and then do another promo mm-hmm. so that I could see exactly what the result was. You know, what kind of sales did I get from a particular promo? Yeah. And then once I figured out the best ones, then I did those all at the same time. Okay. And and there, my book sales really went through the roof at that point. And that's when I hit bestseller. Okay. So that worked out really well. Yeah, Um, that's awesome. Well, I know another thing that you've done, and I wanted to ask you about your experience with this, is Podmatch, how we officially connected. Oh, yes. Is just, yeah, what's your experience been with using a service like Podmatch? I am very impressed with Podmatch. Mm -hmm. I'm impressed with the people. um, They have training on Podmatch, so you uh, can take the training and learn how to be a, you know, better uh, interview Mm -hmm. and how to write your author bio, how to contact others on Podmatch, how the whole thing works. Mm -hmm. I've probably done 25 interviews Mm -hmm. from Podmatch. Um, I did quite a few of them for a while. And then I I had so many, I had to quit for a while because I was getting tired. of. Yeah. (laughs) I was doing like three a week. Uh-huh. Yeah, so that was probably a, a bit too many, but it was really fun. I've really yeah. enjoyed it a lot. And so many different kinds of people are hosts. And it's really interesting to be on the different kinds of programs. Yeah. Yeah. And, that's so true. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we also, we just started a podcast of our own, uh-huh. from Soul Sunshine. And, um, but we haven't gotten very far with it yet. We're just at the very beginning stages. But the few episodes that we've done have been really fun, and it's great to be able to interview our authors on our podcast. Is it live to listen to now? It's it's streaming. We, okay. It, we stream it. So, yeah. um, you know, we've been doing it late Sunday afternoon. Okay. And we had to take a sabbatical for a short time. Uh-huh. My co-host had to move. So, oh, okay. You know, that's taken him a couple of weeks to get settled again, but I'm hoping yeah, that maybe we may be able to get started again on, on this Sunday. That's awesome. Yay. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'll be sure to put that in my a link in the show notes as well as to your website, Susan. Is there any place in particular you want listeners to connect with you online? Well, my website, which is soulsunshine.com. Um, if they want to write to me, it's easy to remember books. Mm-hmm at soulsunshine.com. And always remember it's S-O-N okay. instead of the S-U. Yeah, I'll be sure to put that link in the show yeah, notes as so well, because I know a lot yeah. of people want to reach out to you and just ask you some questions about publishing and find out more about how you can help them. It'll be such a blessing. So thank yeah. you for your time today, Susan. It's been so fun to connect and just learn more about your publishing company and your expertise and how you serve authors. Thank you. It's been really great. I really appreciate your time. Oh, y'all, I hope you enjoyed getting to learn about Susan and Soul Sunshine Publishing and how they serve authors and also more about Podmatch. It is one of my favorite places to connect with new authors and publishers. And if you're just at the idea stage of your book or getting ready to get your manuscript published, be sure to check out Soul Sunshine to see if they are a fit for you. And if you're interested in learning more about hybrid publishing, be sure to check out episode 89 to hear from my conversation with Nancy Erickson, aka The Book Professor, because she shares all about book mapping and hybrid publishing. And stay tuned next week as you're going to hear from another new-to-me publishing resource, Michelle DeFilippo of 1106 Design, who provides high-quality book design, production, and publishing support for self-published authors. I can't wait for y'all to meet Michelle. Thanks for tuning in today. And as always, I'll be there for you to help you build your audience and reach new readers one podcast at a time. See you then.